Welcome to Physician Academy. Today we're going to be talking about second line therapies in type 2 diabetes. We've already talked about metformin and we've also talked about type 2 diabetes. So now we're going to talk about medications that you can add as a second line therapy when you've reached your max in metformin and you do not feel you're getting any more benefit. So one of the older second line therapies were the Sulfonyl ureas, and uh, these drugs, and they have a first, second, and third generation. There's a lot of different uh, trade names and drug names. Most commonly in the United States, we use three of them: glipizide, gliburide, and glimepiride. Glimepiride, sorry, long words. The pharmacology of all these work on the beta cells the islet cells in the, or in the uh, pancreas by stimulating the pancreatic islet beta cells to increase insulin production. They're excreted in the urine and they're metabolized in the liver through the cytochrome P450. So when uh, giving these medications to patients, you do need to monitor a complete metabolic panel, which would give you the kidney function as well as the liver function, and to adjust your treatment accordingly. So if their kidney function is not up to normal, then you need to adjust the dosing. Same with the liver. If they're having liver issues, you would adjust the dosing and consider even using going to insulin. The common side effects are weight gain and abdominal upset, and then the most important side effect is hypoglycemia from too much insulin release. This creates a problem. I like to have my patients all go on a low carb diet. If you push a low carb diet and the patients are inconsistent, then when they add one of these sulfonylureas, either glipizide, gliburide, or uh, glimepiride, then you can end up with hypoglycemic events. So it's very important that they actually eat a consistent carb load and again, I prefer to push them on a low carb. So this is not one of my preferred second line dosage, second line medications, but it is a common one. It's losing, coming out of favor now and they're starting to move to other ones. So how do I start one of these? So after I've maxed out my metformin or I don't feel I'm getting enough response to my metformin, I would start with, uh, I like glipizide. So I usually start with five milligrams and uh, I start once a day. The max on glipizide is 20 milligrams per day. And now they have a new extended release form uh, formulary. So I usually start them on uh, five milligrams per day. And I check them again in three months and see how their hemoglobin A1C is performing. If I'm getting an improvement in hemoglobin A1C and I'm, a, and I'm satisfied with the improvement, I stay the course. If I'm not getting a sufficient change in hemoglobin A1C, then I increase the dosing. And so about every three months, I would adjust my therapeutic plan. And every three months, again, I try to encourage people to control their eating habits and look for weight loss and, and increase in exercise. Gliburide is another one that I've used. And the starting, I usually started at 2.5 once a day. Its maximum dose is also 20 milligrams a day. And it comes in a 1.25, a 2.5, and a 5 milligram. But I usually start to 2.5 once a day. And again, every three months, I would uh, assess their hemoglobin A1C and a, a complete metabolic panel, and at that point, adjust my therapy accordingly. Uh, glimepiride uh, comes as a one, two, or four milligram tablet. The maximum dosing is eight milligrams per day, and you give it with the first main meal of the day. And I usually start around one milligram, and again, adjust every three months. <laughs> So that's it for the sulfonylureas. Well, in a fun note, a number of the sulfonylureas are used as herbicides, which I thought was interesting. That's a weed killer because they can interfere with the plant's biosynthesis of certain amino acids. So that's a fascinating side point I came across while researching this. Next up, we'll be talking about other second-line drugs, the newer ones.